Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Daisy. As you guys saw by the title, I will be reading my subscribers' spooky stories. These are my absolute favorites. So, of course, if you haven't already, go get comfy, go grab your snacks, grab your cobija, and let's get straight into it. Hey Daisy, my name is Lupita. I have a scary paranormal story to tell you. Before diving into the story, here's a little background. My house is somewhat haunted, though I don't believe the entity is malicious, just perhaps a misunderstood spirit. My grandparents, my parents, my uncle and I all live under the same roof. There are a total of four rooms in our house. With that being said, only us females have experienced something unexplainable, which we believe to be paranormal. My mom was the first one to encounter something odd. She was sitting in the living room late one night, close to the front door. We had a small table and a heavy metal chair on the front porch. Around 2, 3 in the morning, she couldn't sleep, so she got up and started watching TV. Suddenly, she heard the metal chair on the front porch scrape against the floor. Knowing the wind wasn't strong enough to move it, she went to check. She didn't see anything outside, so she came back in and kept watching TV. She told me about it the next morning, and it totally freaked me out. My grandma was next. She was home alone while the men were at work, and my mom and I were out. She was in the kitchen, which is connected to the living room by two doors. She heard the front door open, close, lock, and then footsteps walking into the living room. She called out from the kitchen. Ya llegaron? And she swears she heard my mom reply, Si. Sí. Then, she saw a shadow move quickly towards my parents' room, which is past the kitchen. My grandma then made her way to my parents' room and saw the light was off. She proceeded to turn the light on and didn't see my mom. She checked the closet, but of course, we weren't there. A couple hours later, my mom and I came back, for real this time. She immediately told us everything. I got goosebumps and was speechless. So far, those have been the only experiences my mom and my grandma have had. Now on to my experience, which was by far the worst of all. It was late at night and I had just gotten out of the shower. Everyone else was already asleep and I was quietly making myself a snack, milk and chocolate chip cookies while watching some of your videos. Oh, thank you. It was around 10, 11 p.m. and I was starting to feel sleepy. I was on break from school, so I wasn't too worried about going to bed early. But eventually, I couldn't fight the tiredness anymore, so I decided to call it a night. I snuggled into bed and got comfy. But before I could close my eyes, my phone rang. It was my little cousin calling on FaceTime. I was too sleepy to reach over and get my phone to answer. So I ignored it and closed my eyes. And that's when the dream, or what I think was sleep paralysis, started. It felt too real to be a dream. I opened my eyes and saw my phone still ringing. So I reached over to answer it. I was halfway out of bed, leaning toward the nightstand. But just as I was about to grab my phone, I couldn't move. I froze in that position and I started to lose my balance. I fell, but I didn't feel any pain, which made me think this was all just a dream. Somehow, knowing it wasn't real made me feel a little better, but I still couldn't move. Suddenly, I felt myself floating, slowly rising up toward the ceiling. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw a dark shadow standing by my door frame. As I floated, I started spinning in circles around my room. At first, it was slow, but it quickly got faster and faster, making me feel sick to my stomach. I wanted to scream, but I couldn't. I couldn't even speak. I started praying silently in my head, thinking about my parents and how close I felt to death. Then my bedroom door suddenly flew open, and I floated out of the living room, spinning in circles there too. I was terrified, but I could feel myself getting closer to being able to move. Finally, I fell dropping right in the middle of the dark, cold hallway. As soon as I hit the ground, I got up and bolted to my parents' room. 
Not to sound like a baby, but I crawled into bed between them, clinging to my dad's hand and hugging my mom. I remember wondering if I was still dreaming. It all felt so real. Then I felt this sense of safety and warmth wash over me. In my head, I kept telling myself, move your hand, Lupita, come on, just move it. When I finally felt my hand twitch, I opened my eyes and there I was, back in bed, sweating, with no covers on and my back aching terribly. I quickly leaped over to check my phone. It was around 3 or 4 in the morning. I grabbed my charger, my phone, my Stanley, and bolted to my parents' room. The next morning, I told my mom and grandma everything, and soon, the whole family knew. Ever since that experience, I've had similar dreams. Well, a few months ago, I was alone in my room when suddenly my nightlight fell out of the plug completely. I don't know what came over me, but I found myself saying, No hagas eso like I was speaking to someone. It was strange because I had no control over my voice or my thoughts. A few other minor things like that have happened, but nothing as intense as floating around. I believe the spirit or entity in my house might just be misunderstood. Whenever I have these experiences at night, I don't feel scared anymore. I feel warmth, almost like a comforting presence. It's like the spirit just wants to be around someone. I spent a lot of time trying to piece it all together, and I think it may be connected to a neighbor we had years ago. This neighbor was an elderly woman who was somewhat close to my mom and grandma. She was really ill, and my mom says she was by her side throughout her pregnancy with me. The woman lived alone after her husband passed away and her daughter had moved out of the city. Sadly, she passed away in her bed. We found out when her daughter came to our door to break the news. She also gave my mom a porcelain figurine of God, which she found by her mom's nightstand, along with a note that said, Para tu bebe, hermosa. The woman had never met me, but my mom said she was a sweetheart and had been excited to meet me. To this day, I still have that porcelain figurine in my room next to my other porcelain dolls, and it's beautiful. My mom placed it in my room when she first got it, and it's been there ever since. I never thought it was haunted or anything. Whenever I touch it, I feel warm and safe. What's interesting is that in the bad dream where I was floating, the one thing I paid attention to was how bright the porcelain god was. It felt like my eyes were drawn to it, which makes me believe it could be her, our old neighbor. The figurine is on my nightstand so it's always close to me. I don't really complain about the dreams anymore. It feels like she's trying to tell me something or just wants to be with me. The only thing I don't like is that I can't move or speak when it happens. I hope it's her, but sometimes I wonder if it's something else, maybe even an evil entity. This happened in 2021, in the house I currently live in with my mom, little sister, and little brother. We had experienced paranormal issues before, but never anything like this. It's something I'll never forget. I still get chills thinking about it. When my sister was about 9 months old, she started sleeping in her crib instead of with my mom. On the first night, I was asked to sleep with her to make sure she was breathing properly and that she was okay. Of course, I agreed because as an older sister, that's my job. That night, I fell asleep with the eeriest feeling. I had never felt anything like it before. I woke up in the middle of the night and checked my phone. It was 3 a.m. I watched a few YouTube shorts and then went back to sleep. I woke up again, feeling like someone was watching me. When I looked up, I saw a tall woman with pale skin, dressed in white, staring and pointing towards my baby sister. I immediately closed my eyes and screamed, La Sangre de Cristo, and said a prayer. When I opened my eyes, she was gone. I immediately got up to go to the bathroom, but the lights in the hallway started flickering. Then she appeared again at the end of the hallway. I immediately began praying and crying. Ever since that night, I haven't been able to sleep in my room. 
Every time I walk in, I get chills and remember that terrifying night. Hi Daisy, my name is Ana Heath. I have been following you for about three years and I love watching your scary stories. Thank you so much, Ana Heath. I love your name, by the way. It's so pretty. Recently, something paranormal happened at my dad's house, but this isn't the first time. To start, I live in California and my parents are divorced, so they live in different areas of LA. My dad is Armenian and they don't really believe in anything paranormal. My mom is Mexican, so you can guess that she does believe in all the spooky stuff. Let's begin at the very start, when my dad's girlfriend, Annie, came from Armenia to live with him in Calabasas. In the first couple of nights she was there, we were talking and she asked if I believed in the paranormal. I said yes. She then explained that she had felt the presence of a dark figure walking around the house. And mind you, it's a big house. She also mentioned that while sleeping, she felt the covers being pulled off of her and my dad. At the time, my dad didn't believe what she was saying, but soon, he would. That's her story. Mine's a little shorter. I was once at my dad's house, and I walked into my room and closed the door. As I started walking away, I heard a loud knock coming from the door. I opened it, but didn't see or hear anything, so I thought maybe I was just imagining it. I closed the door again and locked it. As I walked away, I heard the same loud knock again. I opened the door, thinking it was my dad or Annie, but no one was there. I went downstairs to ask if either of them had knocked on my door, but to my surprise, they had been sitting in the backyard the whole time. Now here is where it gets good. My best friend and I had planned to go to a concert, and the day before, my dad offered to take us. We decided to have a sleepover at his house. We stayed up watching scary movies, talking, and laughing. Since we had a concert, we had battery packs with us. I want to emphasize that my room has a bedroom, living room, and a bathroom that doesn't lock. We plugged the battery packs into the living room outlet by the TV, and I placed my phone charger in the bedroom area. Around midnight, I decided to go to sleep because I was getting tired. My friend told me she planned to stay up a bit longer since she wasn't tired yet. I usually sleep with white noise because silence freaks me out, so I had that on. I didn't charge my phone because the outlet was a bit far from the bed and I like to sleep with my phone next to me. In the morning, I woke up and went to the bathroom and noticed that the battery packs had been unplugged. My friend and I asked each other if one of us had unplugged them, but we both said no. As we were getting creeped out, I noticed my phone charger was now next to the battery packs. I asked again, are you sure you didn't move it? She replied, I thought you did. We both looked at each other, shocked. My phone charger had moved a couple of feet from where I had originally plugged it in. As we were getting ready, she told me she didn't want to scare me or wake me up but she had heard some creepy stuff around 3 a.m. She heard footsteps and the door opening, and for 30 minutes, she kept hearing mumbling coming from the bathroom area. She thought it was my dad, as she heard a man's voice. But as she was telling me this, I stopped her and explained that the only door that could have opened was the bathroom door, since the main door to leave the room was locked. Later, I asked my dad if he had been near my room, and he said, no, Annie and I were asleep the whole time. That's when he admitted, I believe you, maybe there is a ghost around the house. After that, we slept with the lights on, and I told myself I'm not coming back here again. Hey Daisy, this is a two-in-one story and it gets pretty unsettling. This is a story that I don't personally remember, but it's one my mom has told me about many times. At the time, 
My mom, my sister, and I lived together in a small, unassuming house. To give you an idea of the layout, there was the living room, then my mom's room, and a few feet down the hallway was the room my sister and I shared. My mom said that every day, without fail, I would walk out of our room and head towards the living room, but each time, I would stop dead in my tracks at my mom's door, my eyes wide with terror. Standing by the fireplace in her room, there was always a lady dressed in white. Her appearance was so chilling, so unnaturally horrifying, that I would break into hysterics the moment I saw her. I remember the overwhelming fear that paralyzed me. Her ghostly figure etched into my mind. Her eyes, dark voids of malice, seemed to penetrate my very soul. I couldn't understand why no one else saw her why no one else shared my terror. To this day, I still don't know what I really saw, or if she was something conjured by my childish imagination, or something far more sinister. But my mother and sister remember my screams all too well. The piercing cries of a child tormented by something unseen by anyone else. This next encounter I will be sharing happened before I was born and involves my mom and sister. When my mom was in the military, she lived in base housing, a place notorious for its eerie occurrences. One day, my mom was playing with my sister in their small, sparsely furnished apartment. My sister, barely taller at the time, was giggling uncontrollably, her eyes fixed on something behind the couch. Amused? My mom asked her what was so funny. My sister just pointed behind the couch, laughing at someone my mom couldn't see. A chill ran down my mom's spine as she cautiously dropped to the floor and peeked behind the couch, half expecting to see an intruder, but there was no one there. The room was empty except for the unsettling feeling of being watched. My mom's heart pounded as she quickly checked all the locks and doors, fearing someone had broken in. But everything was secure. The windows were shut tight and the doors were locked. The apartment was silent, yet the feeling of an unseen presence lingered. My mom couldn't shake the image of my sister laughing at something or someone that she couldn't see. Disturbed and unable to rid herself of the creeping dread my mom decided to move out of that apartment soon after. To this day, she remains haunted by the memory of my sister's laughter and the invisible man she seemed to see behind the couch. The thought that something otherworldly might have been sharing their home was too much to bear, and it left the mark of fear that time has never completely erased. So that was it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. And a big thank you to everyone that shared in their spooky stories. If you have a spooky story that you'd like to share with us, feel free to send it in at daisyspooks at gmail.com. But guys, do you guys feel fall? Fall is in the air. I feel it. The air feels different. The stores, ni se diga. You can really see the fall decor. And I'm loving it, but my wall is not. My wallet is not liking it. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope all is well with you. And I hope to see you guys all in my next one. Bye.